Welcome back to Aggressive Mastery. This is Micah again. If you uh, hopefully saw the first video here of the Deadlock series on road lists, and uh, I wanted to go ahead and do some review of what I did yesterday and the plans perhaps for today or tomorrow. Uh, another thing with these videos, I saw a comment that it was a little, the volume was low on the prior one. I turned on, turned up the gain for this one, so please let me know if this helped. All right. Let's see. First off, I'm going to show some of the applications or plugins I spoke about yesterday, and then also then we'll load up the game, which is already running, and show you what was done yesterday, which was getting those applications in there, functioning, and dealing with colliders. Let's see here. Ooh. All right, first I want to go ahead and give a plug for Code Monkey. He's on YouTube and he's one of the best uh, tutorial series I've seen out there to help, especially on the bleeding edge of stuff with ECS right now. So there it is, I'll put a link down below, but definitely check out his stuff as you're looking into these, uh, into this type of coding or anything at all. That guy's awesome, thank you Code Monkey. Uh, next off, I talked yesterday about Map Magic. Here's the page from Map Magic. And uh, what it does is basically helps you, oh, this is great with the visuals, do some uh, generation of terrain, then texturing of that terrain, then adding trees, and even splitting the terrain up uh, into the multiple layers. <clears throat> so Map Magic's something I use pretty heavily. Used it in the prior FPS sample in 2018, and I'm going to use it in this for sure. And luckily, it's running just fine, and I can use it for placing of objects that then get converted into entities at runtime using the entity conversion system. Uh, and then the terrain itself, I've also gotten that rendering, which you'll see, and also colliding with the ECS stuff, which is great. Um, using a, a conversion of the terrain to mesh with a small script, and then using the mesh and getting rid of the renderer just as a collider over top of the actual terrain. Vegetation Studio Pro is something I'm going to get running here as well. What this does is lets you set up biomes or templates of how the terrain is handled for adding of trees and grass, rocks, or any type of prefabs. So I might actually be using this for distance rendering of buildings and uh, large objects as well as uh, I also have and will be implementing the amplified uh, shader. I should look that link up as well here. But right now, Vegetation Studio, and this is cool because it will put the trees in, and mainly it also does a culling, a point of view culling, which I'll show you. This also, Vegetation Studio also uses the job system, and it's written by Awesome Technologies, so it's something I'm able to outsource uh, for that portion of the rendering, which is really great, versus writing my own. Uh, and here's Ma Ma Magic as well on the Assets Store. Uh, I also per have some of the assets for the trees and grass that I'm going to be converting in here, such as these. And what this does is that what you're seeing is their sample where I get uh, to now use these trees, grass, and textures, which is what you start to do is to acquire um, or uh, curate the models and things that make up your game. And I also picked up some other trees here. Because uh, I wanted it, I like the visual quality. I might do some things, or I plan to do some things to increase the visual quality of these objects, but these are the base objects, which save me a lot of time and get me closer to my idea of how good my game looks at the end. And I think I start off with it, but I'll do it again. Code Monkey, go check it out. All right, so here's the game up and running, and right now what you'll see is the road, the terrain is out there. Uh, sorry for shooting and talking. So let's just, I can jump out and get on the train. And so now, and, and there, are, there are foot articulations working as well, which is great. To get this to work, what I did was I got, as you can see here in the window, this terrain, export terrain. I actually have a small script in here. Export terrain script. And you could probably uh, Google it, but I'll put a, uh, a link down below to where I got it. It was written, oh, there's a link right there. Great. Uh, this converts a train, select a train, click it, export it to an object. Go ahead and do it at full, because it's not going to render how I did it. It's just your collider. 
do your export then I drag that model back in now I'm going to go ahead and let that model be converted to an entity so I did add it to the environmental sub scene um, yes great I figured something like that would happen. I did this in running in play mode, so uh, <clears throat> I didn't think it was going to like me hitting edit. All right, so there we go, edit again. So inside the environment, here you can see mesh for physics. This right here, it's invisible, it is the actual mesh. And let's see, I think I could, might be able to wireframe this and then pull it up. No render on it. All right. Well, basically, what you're seeing here is this. These triangles are the terrain that was shaded. When you, shading means we're applying the texture to it. Uh, I can export these triangles into a mesh, which I did, and then have that mesh treated just as a physics object here uh, for the player to, and bullets and everything to collide to, which is what I did. So I'll do that for each terrain, and that's the, the quickest fix I could think of yesterday, and it works great. And there doesn't seem, it performs fine. All right, so that is how we did collisions on terrain, and how we got terrain to render is, I think it was pretty much rendering using this, but let's look at the default terrain material. Did I take that out of the, I believe I took it out of the packages. Boom, boom, right there. So what you'll want to go do is go into your packages. It's going to probably hide out in the HDRP render pipeline. And you're going to find this material. That's what you'll want to go ahead and apply to uh, your terrain to, to have it be the correct terrain material. So then use Matte Magic or, what, or the regular terrain material uh, texturing stuff. All right, so that should be it for terrain. Go ahead and close that. Uh, no, don't save it. All right. Now for Vegetation Studio, let's hit play again. That loaded up just fine without any errors. This uses jobs This is to render the trees, which you're seeing down there in wireframe. Please just start right back up. Hey, please just start right back up. Thank you. The first time you hit play on this, I find opening it for the day takes a very long time. I actually was doing this video before, but it just wouldn't work. All right, so now we have our terrain. We're able to shoot it. Sorry for that. But we don't have any trees. We have trees in the editor, right? So that is because I don't have a camera selected in here. So I have a little script I have not brought over yet, but that, what it does is just basically say, hey, the camera's the player, which is actually this player camera right here. Clone. Boom, trees are now in here. So now what's happening is I have those models from the asset I bought pulled in and rendering using Vegetation Studio, using the job system, just where the player's looking. And let's go ahead and see that. So if I go back to the scene, here you can see in the wireframe view that the player is right here on top of the map we saw. And it, it, he's looking out that, she's looking out that direction at the trees and there's the trees. Now, as that player moves around, you can see the trees also are rendering, but you don't notice it as much in the player view because, uh, but this is this is just some rendering stuff. I, don't, I know some people aren't here for that, so I won't waste much time, but it's working in ECS. Now, what is not working is that with how this is going on right here, I'm going to shoot these, or I, I can walk right through the trees, right? There's a collider system in there. I turned it off. I just don't expect it to work because what it's going to do is, is move colliders as objects. What I'm going to do is use map magic to put a collider here uh, without a renderer where the trees are supposed to be, and then also use a persistent storage database, which is in the software, to tell Vegetation Studio where to render the tree. So the visuals for the tree are already there. I just don't have a reason to, I can't shoot them or, or be stopped by them. Matt Magic is going to put that in, the collision of an object there. And at that point we will have trees everywhere all the time. 
uh, to collide with. The visuals for it will just be rendered when we're looking at it, like you're seeing there. And let's go ahead and go to shaded. That's nice. And out here at the edge, what you should see, and, and I don't have it implemented at this moment, is lower definition trees. Things that look less good because they're farther away, you can't see it. Level of detail. I believe that's going to go ahead and work just fine. I just, I'm using this one model because in prior testing I found it got the best frames per second to not have uh, multiple meshes, but to have a single mesh, single renderer using ECS. So we're going to see if that's still a thing. And you can see at 4K, we're getting 60 frames just fine right there with these trees and the, and the terrain. One thing about terrain, you do want to make sure you have a pixel error up. I have mine at like 6, which is good. If I hit 1, what you see, it drops the frames and the definition gets better in the terrain at far distance. Uh, so basically, this is how much the terrain rounds out. And if we go ahead and hit our wireframe again, you can see this happen. But right now, there's a lot of triangles. That's a lot of things you have to render. As you reduce the pixel rate, you can you should see those reduce to there you go. The, at far away, it will be less triangles. At close, more triangles to where the player is. And so you can play with that and see, because that will greatly reduce the impact on uh, big scenes or big terrain scenes to not have as many triangles. I find uh, uh, six is a nice number for detailed terrain, and then you can turn it up from there if you, as you need. Vegetation Studio, uh, my biome, my trees, right now, what this does is say, okay, where is there a texture like this on the ground? I'll put a tree there with this type of uh, uh, <clears throat> percentage. But uh, I'm going to use Map Magic to tell exactly where those trees are, so you'll see that in the next video. And for rendering on the trees, I'm doing instance, instance and direct. I think we can just click it. Well put all the trees right on top of the player and cause bad performance like this. Because what's happening is those, uh, you need to tell the, the clones or the instance indirect versions of the trees where to go now. And there's a node that Vegetation Studio has that can go into the graph that will do that. And so tomorrow I'll show you how I modified that. Or well, the next video will show you how that's modified so that we can then run instance indirect rather than just instance on the trees, which should uh, improve performance. And then you have normal here. Normal would be where it's actually putting uh, co full copies of that mesh and renderer. Here, let's see. Holy shit, 13 minutes. All right, out there. All right, that's the video. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.